this video, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about uh, the latest zero access user mode variant that can infect 64-bit um, versions of Windows. Um, I have my dropper right here on the desktop, so we'll just go ahead and infect this install. And you see the dropper pretends to be Flash Player. And if you try to opt out of the user account control prompt, you're just going to get it again. So. I believe this is mostly for show. The um, infection should have already taken hold. Um, we'll just let it complete just in case. And we'll go through the usual just in case. And we're going to reboot just to make sure the infection is able to um, take hold. What it's going to do um, before the reboot, um, <clears throat> some payload that it downloaded gets added to the pending file rename operations registry key and essentially it replaces uh, the good services.exe in your Windows System 32 directory with an infected um, version. So now there will be a couple of symptoms. Internet access at this point may or may not work. It just um, depends. I've noted sometimes it does work and sometimes it doesn't. Kind of off and on. The main symptom you'll see is there is no Windows firewall service. Not there. Um, in any case, uh, let me take you through some of the changes. What did I just do? Oops. Turn on the magnifier. Uh, let's get that off of there. That was nasty. Okay. The first thing we're going to show you is the current user account software, classes, CLS ID. Normally, nothing exists here. Um, this actually is a CLS ID that you'll normally find under HK, LM, um, classes, software, and classes. And we're not going to go there right now. But normally, you'll find this key under there and it has a certain value that holds uh, um, some data. Uh, <clears throat> what's going on here is um, the classes in the user key are loaded before the classes in the um, HKLM uh, branch. So what happens is the malware puts its setting here with a legitimate um, entry for the C under CLS ID and it adds the malware to this key. Now what you want to do um, note that users slash temp slash app data slash local slash this GUID slash in. Now that's the malware. Note that the same GUID folder that you'll find under users. Let's uh, show. This is the folder with the malware. This should look familiar to you. 
um, the same GUID you'll find is the name of a folder now also in your Windows installer directory also hidden with a copy of the same stuff so basically we've got to get rid of those items but you can't get rid of those items because they're in use um, the malware is active on the system and naturally the malware has already replaced uh, and infected the services.exe um, which if you terminate services excuse me if you terminate services.exe um, the problem that you're going to have is that uh, Windows will shut down and it'll give you 60 seconds um, a shutdown dash A will not abort it and the reason why I bring this up is because if you have active antivirus software on the system that somehow did not get disabled by the um, infection um, the active antivirus software or perhaps any antivirus scanner that you happen to be using is going to try to terminate services.exe but in doing so it's going to force Windows to reboot um, upon reboot especially if it's an installed uh, antivirus scanner of course it'll terminate services.exe again and you get stuck in this reboot loop so if anything if any antivirus software is on the system and it's been disabled by the malware you don't want to fix it yet um, if you're running a scanner and it wants to remove services.exe you don't want to do that yet either um, we want to go ahead and try to clean up this mess um, now manually I would uh, uh, I would tackle this on an offline system and I put out a tutorial um, with a few screenshots on how to tackle this on an offline system but I've come up with a method to tackle it with an online system with a live system and I wrote a quick tool to remove it so let's get started and we'll just run the tool note the tool detects the zero uh, access user mode variant and what it does is the tool checks for the existence of this particular registry key which should not be there um, if that registry key is detected then the tool will say will give you this message a reboot is required. This tool will now perform additional scans and cleanup and run again after reboot to complete removal. So just click OK. So now the tool is scanning for the various locations that the malware is uh, implanted itself. And it's also going to attempt to replace the services.exe file with a known good copy. Um, the methodology that I use to replace these files and get them deleted um, while the system is running is actually quite simple um, well I'll get into that in just a moment now it says the variants removed click OK to reboot after one more scan um, at this point in time it's going to take care of the services.exe file I'm um, getting back to that methodology that I'm using to remove um, these files that are in use um, it's quite simple what I do is rename the files so um, you'll note that you can rename any file while it's running and even if you can't delete it you can still rename it so what I've done is I've renamed the services.exe component that's infected and scan for a backup copy and replaced it with the backup copy by simply copying it to where it's supposed to go um, the next thing that I've done is I have um, renamed all of the files in the malware directories um, they're still running but once you rename them and reboot then you're free the, the, the files have been renamed so the registry entries are no longer pointing to those files um, so then you're free to delete the registry entries and reboot again and you'll notice I no longer have that registry entry here 
under um, software classes CLSID. Um, I also mentioned that there was one under HKLM and I don't want to try and find it but rest assured um, it's taken care of. The default value has been written back to it. Um, classes. Rest assured the default value has been written back to that file, I mean to that registry entry. So we, we don't have to worry about visiting that. Let's check our file system to ensure that the malicious directories are gone and sure enough it's gone from here and we'll just double check windows installer and we have no more hidden directory um, everything here is legit so we should be good to go um, now we can just get on with repairing the firewall and for that, I've had to update D7's repair firewall functionality because it was not good enough to repair the firewall after this particular variant of zero access. But um, it is now with more recent versions. And uh, the version I'm demonstrating to you is 6.4.15. So we'll just click repair firewall give it just a moment a lot of stuff going on more than what it tells you um, on this message box it does say a reboot may be required so we'll go ahead and reboot Okay. And at this point, with any luck, our um, firewall service will be back in place and we'll be able to see that the firewall is working. We'll just double check that. There we are. Windows firewall service is there. It's started. And when we run to the Windows firewall from D7 you have all of your options um, if, if you were to go to the screen before uh, it would just tell you that it's not using recommended settings and an attempt to click the button to fix that would not have worked um, so there we have it uh, complete removal of the latest zero access aka sirefef.p um, which uh, has a payload um, including .y, .w, .z, and, and a few other um, miscellaneous detections uh, as reported by Microsoft Security Essentials and several others, although they all have slightly different names. Um, but in any case, the tool is KillZA. Um, originally, I tried to put some of this functionality inside D7 itself, and that posed some technical challenges, a um, couple of problems with doing that. And in the most recent version, I ripped out the functionality from D7. And um, we're, just, we're just leaving it as its own tool, which I'll call KillZA. That's available on foolishit.com slash killza.zip. Um, there's a link to it from my blog and um, a couple of uh, uh, forums, on, uh, a couple of threads on the TechNibble forums and on my own support forums. So um, I'll try to get this tool out there um, a little more in the future and um, hopefully the next variant of Zero Access that comes out will be as easy to remove and uh, I'll update the tool for that.
Um, in the meantime, if you have a variant that uh, I don't know about yet, you can certainly give it to me. Send it to foolishtech at foolishit.com and I'll be happy to analyze that and try to figure out how we can uh, incorporate removal into this tool. Um, one last thing I want to get at, if you do go to the Windows firewall and um, you get the display that the firewall can't be enabled, that means your services.exe is still infected. Even with the, file, with the other file system components and the registry entries gone, um, that infected services.exe continually kills the firewall service. So um, if you can't get the firewall repaired with D7's repair Windows firewall function, then you know you're still infected. In that event, you can actually run the KillZA tool again. Well, again, and it will tell you it's not found and that if you suspect further infection or Windows is stuck in a reboot loop, you can click OK and it will force a replacement of that services.exe and then force a reboot. I'm going to cancel that because that's not the case for us here. Um, in any case, that's the end of my demonstration and uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them on the post. Thanks a lot for watching.